Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. This is gonna be fun. So, we were in a live the other night. We were doing an unboxing and we were going doing some giveaways. We give away a few things. And in one of the boxes that you guys had sent me, there was an incredible treasure that I was not expecting. Uh, it was a beautiful Technics linear tracking turntable that had been refurbished by one of our viewers and given to me as a gift. And I, if you, if you haven't watched that show, go back and watch that one. I'm pretty well speechless. It's pretty much probably one of the few times in life where I don't have something to say. And I was just blown away by the kindness, the generosity, and at the end of the day, the fact that you know I'm looking down the barrel of an amazing turntable, a fantastic piece of quality turntable kit. So let's go ahead and take a look at this beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous. Awesome Technics Direct Drive Turntable. You're not going to want to miss this. This is Recordology. This is the SLDL1. This is not their first nor their last linear tracker. And if you're not familiar, the basic concept of a linear tracking turntable versus a regular one is that the cartridge tracks straight across the record surface thereby keeping a perfect tracking angle at all times. Whether or not you could hear the difference is an argument that may be going for the duration of time. I personally can't hear a difference that I can recognize and say, oh, that's because it's a linear tracker versus a radial tracking tone arm. But at the same time, this turntable and others that I've reviewed that are linear as well sound fantastic. As I said before, this is the Technics SLDL1, and it is a direct drive fully automatic linear tracking turntable. This was early 80s, like I said, 80, 81. And this would be a fantastic unit to have. To me, this is a high-end turntable. I've become a Technics fanboy, which is kind of ironic considering that my whole channel is about the very entry level. It has a wonderful 80s kind of look and feel to it. The fit and finish is pristine. There are a few minor scratches on, on the dust cover, but you know, in, in low light in my office, you can hardly even tell. And this kind of lip here, this uh, shelf area, retains a lot of that styling aesthetic of some of the other Technics turntables we've looked at in the past. I guess one of the Panasonic slash Technics uh, trademarks was being able to access controls such as play, pause, start, cue, whatever, front end pitch control with the dust cover closed that you did not need to open the dust cover which is important on this because lifting the dust cover stops play. We'll look at that in a minute. That you could do all of that from the front edge. And it, it's not the only turntable make that did that. By any means, Hitachi and others followed suit. Uh, but that was something that they were sort of known for. And since we're up here, let's look at the controls. Right here, we've got a mechanical power switch. It's a two-position switch. These are both electronic micro switches for the two speeds. It is obviously 33 and 45. And then we've got a roller knob here for the pitch adjust. And those are the indicator lights for the strobe. We'll look at that in a minute. Sliding down here, we do have two more micro switches for repeat cueing, and then two more micro switches for start and stop. As you might have guessed already, this turntable does not have the ability to program individual tracks like the Carrera that we looked at a few weeks ago. However, overall, I would say this is a much higher quality turntable than that one for multiple reasons. I think build quality overall is much higher on this unit. And the fact that it's direct drive, it's just it's just a higher quality piece. It's also a lot heavier than you would think. It is a beast to pick up. It is very, very heavy. On the back, we've got permanently affixed cables. It's got these older RCA cables that, you know, have def probably original. Looks like they're bent a little bit there, but they make contact, they complete the circuit. They sound okay, and if you were to open this up, I'm sure it wouldn't be that difficult to replace. There is also a grounding wire. This looks like it's probably been upgraded over the years. Obviously, these older turntables don't have a built-in preamp, so it requires an external preamp. I've been using the IFI Zen, um, what is it? It's the plastic one, the Zen Air, the Zen Air, and it seems to be working pretty good for that. And obviously, the power cord as well. And that's the back panel, not too much to see back there. Obviously it is made by Matsushita, who makes the Technics line, the Panasonic line, 
and this is a made in Japan piece of equipment, which is good. Okay, I don't want to flip it all the way upside down, but you can see that there are a couple of adjustments here. You've got a power adjustment, and somewhere around here, I believe, is an adjustment for the reject point. It wouldn't surprise me. You'll notice that there's these modern rubber feet that have been placed right there. The originals are long gone. The front feet work fine, and then it's got these aftermarket rubber feet which the second you place it on the ground, you forget about, they work perfectly fine. It's not hollow whatsoever. You can tap vigorously anywhere on it and it's completely non-microphonic, meaning that it doesn't, you don't hear this being picked up through the audio, It's which is usually you just lightly tap a turntable and you can hear foom, foom, foom in the audio. This one, it is very well isolated. The sound is very well isolated. So on this direct drive turntable, when you can tell these from a mile away because the, the tone arm is short and it's way back here instead of being down here, the cartridge, I should say. And they usually have this cover on the back here that kind of obscures the back end of the tone arm. Some of them are not attached. The, the playing mechanism, I should say, is not attached to the lid. This one it is. So this super thick acrylic dust cover on the front lifts up and you can see all of the tone arm assembly, the tone arm tracking assembly, et cetera, et cetera, is all contained in the lid and is right here when you lift this piece up. So <laughs> this is just so cool, right? It is an over-engineered turntable. You don't need this level of complexity to play a record by any means. This is definitely taking it to the next level to see how much better we can make it with the linear tracking, with some of the other functionality, being fully automatic, et cetera, et cetera. But with the lid up, you can see uh, the extent of the plinth itself. And there's even a little recessed area back there to accommodate the full-sized platter. And the platter is a good place to start. So let's take a look at that. I think this is so cool. This is probably the coolest turntable that I've ever reviewed and certainly ever owned. So it does have a rubber, and before I even take that off, it has a rubber platter mat, which we'll look underneath in a minute. But see these openings here? Those are optical receptacles. So there's a sensor in there. And this unit does shine a light. And depending on how big the record is, it blocks one or more of those openings, thereby telling the record how big of a record you've put on and where to drop the tone arm. Remember, we're telling it the speed, but it's gonna know the size, and that accommodates weird sizes and, and speeds too. So if you've got a seven inch record that's 33, or a 12 inch record that's 45, you can play it on here as well. The only issue would be if you have a clear record where the light shines through, or even a translucent one, you can run into problems with that. Now, if you do play a translucent record, you can still use this unit and I'll show you how that's done. It all has to do with an override switch located right up here. Let's take a closer look. So right now it's set to auto, meaning that it will use the optical system to detect the size of the record. But if you have a clear or translucent record, you can set it to manually play seven, 10 or 12 inch records. And that way it will not rely on the optical sensor that would shine through a clear record. So that's really cool to have. For my needs at this moment, the auto switch will work just fine. Okay, back to the platter. It's got the typical Technics rugged rubber platter mat with the little indent for picking up seven inch records and the indent for the uh, protruding labels, et cetera, et cetera. On the back, it is smooth with the little notches to line up those sensors appropriately. And there will be one place on this, I think it's back here, yeah, you can see those holes underneath there that line up. So that's where that's going to shine the light down through these holes right up there by that switch. And if it sees the light, it knows that the record doesn't extend to that area and thereby knows the size that you're trying to play. Let's go ahead and remove the platter. This is very cool. Okay, removing the platter removes probably the coolest thing to my eyes. And that is the fact that this direct drive motor is the platter mechanism. The platter mechanism and the base of the plinth there forms the motor, just like the 1200s. And you can see here the bottom of the platter itself has a magnet, a beefy magnet and strobe markings on the bottom. You may be saying, how in the world can you see those strobe markings? We'll look at that in a minute. But yeah, that 
protruding magnet there. And this is die cast aluminum. You can tell this is just a die cast aluminum, but unlike so many others we've looked at, especially belt driven ones, this has uh, a lot more heft to it because there's a lot more going on. This is completely integrated. The motor is completely integrated. Let's look closer up down here. Check this out. So that is indeed a circuit board and that is indeed the lower half of the motor assembly. And if you were to look at the bottom of this piece, you would just see a you know fairly thin wafer and a metal housing because there's no motor under there. This is the motor. This is the motor. Obviously, this is a brushless motor using magnets and it's essentially integrated into the platter mechanism itself. Now, remember when I said earlier that the strobe marking, I showed you the strobe markings are on the bottom side of the platter. There's another look. So when the, when the platter is in place, they would be facing down. How in the world can you observe those strobe markings? Well, you will look right here. And we're gonna take a closer look at this in a minute when I've got it connected. But there is a prism. There's basically a mirror down there. And light is projected onto the strobe or onto the strobe markings of the platter underneath. And then it's reflected back and you look down in that little window. And that's a lot of fun. That's a very, very cool, cool thing. So that's how the uh, platter and motor and all that works. And another thing I want to point out too is the fact that one of the complaints of this unit, there's not many, but the, maybe the only complaint of this unit is that it's kind of hard to clean your records if on the turntable, if you use like a brush or something like that when it is open, but it's possible. And one of the, the tricks to doing that is realizing that this micro switch back here is activated when the lid is closed. So that's how the turntable knows that the, the lid is closed and that it's safe to drop the stylus. And again, I will show you that once we get it all put back together. But speaking of stylus and cartridges, let's look at the one on this unit. So this is outfitted with a P-mount cartridge. That's very common for linear tracking turntables. And think, I think they were all P-mount. I could be wrong. Let me know down in the comments below. But this Phono cartridge from Audio Technica is a vintage, no longer in production. It's got that classic metal housing design. It looks really cool, especially from the top. And I was also given a couple brand new styli for it. So the blue stylus housing is new and the cartridge sounds fantastic. When it's in transit, there's this little um, thing that flips out right here that allow, I think it's this way. Yeah, so you can keep it in storage without it rotating out of position if you're storing it. So. That's very, very cool as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it back together again. There's these little indented areas here that allow you to get decent leverage when you're removing the platter or putting it back on and then making sure to line up the platter mat with those holes the best way possible. And I think that's about it. Oh yeah, 45 adapter, there isn't they didn't come with one, but that's okay. I've got plenty of those and uh, there's no peg for it, but I found that just, you know, putting one down there, this is a great time to mention the fact that this particular one, this purple one is going to be going off sale. <laughs> is that the opposite of on sale? It's going away because this is a limited edition. So if you want to grab the purple one, if you're collecting the different colors and you want to make sure you have the purple one, do it sooner than later. Cause in the next few days to a couple of weeks that will be going away. Have you ordered your official Recordology 45 adapter yet? Check out the link in the video description below. And obviously a huge thank you to everybody who has supported the channel. So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a seven inch record. Let's go ahead and close the lid. And it just looks cool. It looks really, really cool. Power switch to power it on. We're gonna tell it it's 33 or 45. This one is 45. And the cueing switch will raise or lower the cartridge, but it will also spin up the turntable. And I wanna make sure that I am not dropping that on the platter mat, but it knows because it's already sensed the fact that this is indeed a seven inch record. So even though I didn't hit play yet, I just wanted to cue it up. I just wanted to drop the tone arm. It knows not to do that where there's no record. So it moved over to where it needs to be and it went to town. 
it is now playing the record. I could have got the same effect by hitting the start button. If I hit stop, it will lift up the tone arm and it will slide back to home base. There is a red light on top there that you can use to see you know, approximately how far into your record you are. I don't know how useful that is, to be honest with you, because I can kind of visually see where I'm at. And that is a separate armature, by the way, like the tone arm can move a little bit independent of that red light. And when I lift this, it automatically raises the tone arm. See that really quickly, how it lifted it and it's sending it home. Okay, let's play a 12 inch record. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off, place that right there. And I picked a pretty poor pressing <laughs> on purpose because it is a great demonstration of how well a linear tracking turntable can track a bumpy, warped record that, you know, maybe isn't even centered right. And this record is all of those things. This is the Star Wars Rise of Skywalker Disc 1 Walt Disney Lucasfilm. And for whatever reason, this is a bad pressing. Not terrible, but it's not the best pressing by any means. Remember when I was talking about how to clean a record? So you just press right here and hit the Q button and that will spin it up and that's all it takes. So now I can easily clean my record with a brush, microfiber or otherwise. And then when I let go of that switch, it will go ahead and stop. So it's, it's really not a problem. Some people haven't figured that out yet though. And that's fair enough. You kind of figure this stuff out as you go. I've le definitely learned a lot just by having this for a week so far and it's not going anywhere i mean where i i have reviewed i think three other linear tracking turntables i have never felt compelled to want to keep one until i've had this unit i am enthralled with this i'm it's fantastic i haven't listened to any other turntable this week this is the only one i've listened to and i'm just speechless by it i think it's absolutely fantastic so Let's look at this. I want, remember I was showing you how this reflects the strobe markings? I wanna show you what that looks like on. I think this is one of the coolest features. Okay, so as you can see, it's a clear little window that goes down to a mirror and the light is shining up on the bottom side of that platter. Usually you would be looking through the dust cover when you're doing this because the lid would be closed, but it's like I said, it's a little scratched up. So I wanna give you the best possible look. So I'm doing this with the lid up using that same method I just showed you where I'm pushing the little micro switch and the cueing button just to spin it up and you'll see it come up to speed and then we can adjust the speed as needed with a little knob you can see me adjusting at that bottom row there it is not quartz lock this is not a quartz lock so it's a frequency generator servo which means that it's not quite as deadlocked on speed there's a tiny bit of cogging it's better than my new pioneer is but it's you know it's it's pretty dang locked and i'm going to switch to 45 and once it gets to 45, I'm going to go ahead and tweak that as well. That'll be the middle row. And so, yeah, it looks sharper in person. But, yeah, this is very cool. I love. I think this is fantastic. What a cool way to make sure that your records are spinning at the perfect speed. Like I've mentioned before recently, I believe I mentioned this, I have decided that I really want my turntables to have a strobe and a pitch control. I, I, there's some beautiful turntables, a Fluence line beautiful turntables but i would rather have this more hands-on manual adjustment feature set than just this minimalistic design where you can't adjust the pitch you can't make sure that it's spinning perfectly you know i my ocd will not allow me to listen to a record i know is not spinning at the right speed so i have to have it pitch perfect and a strobe and a pitch control allows you to do just that so let's go ahead and play this 12 inch record again it knows what size it is. It'll drop right from the beginning there. It also defaults to 33 when you put a new record on. I don't know if that's a good thing. I guess it's a good thing, but if you wanted to play back-to-back -back 45s, you manually have to tell it, no, this is a 45 every time you put a record on. Also, it does not have the ability to skip tracks. Some linear trackers had an optical sensor that could sense the blank spaces between tracks, and you could just skip through it like a CD this one does not have that. I can press and hold, and this will slide down the way, and I can say, oh, that's where I want it, let go, and then it goes down and it plays that. Actually, I think it stays up until I hit Q. So you can do that, um, but you can't, if I just click that really quickly, it's not going to you know, skip to the next track, as it were. It's actually gonna go back and uh, do more of a repeat functionality. So it isn't fully featured 
in terms of what linear trackers would become, and I'm not even 100% sure if they did not have the programmability and skip feature set before 1980-81. So I'm not going to say it's because of that. But for whatever reason, this particular model does not have that functionality. That doesn't matter to me. It works perfectly fine. I usually play my records straight through anyway. And even though the Carrera had that programmability, it's not a feature that I found myself using or wanting to have. There's no brake on the motor. Once it's done spinning, it just, you know, gravity slows it down. It is not the highest torque motor that I've ever seen. It takes a second or two to come up to speed, but this is a listening turntable. This isn't a DJ turntable. And for a listening turntable, it is a fantastic one. People love these things. They absolutely love these things. People say that they sound fantastic. They have like no motor rumble that's audible whatsoever. They're durable. They just last and last and last. This thing is almost as old as I am. and <laughs> It's in a lot better shape than I am. I can tell you that. So this is a joy to own. I love it. Let's go ahead. I'm going to hook it back up in my room, in my office, and we're going to go ahead and do a direct feed sound test. I want to mention too, they, he also gave me an actual Technics phono cartridge. I chose to put on the Audio Technica one for the time being, but I do have that option. So from having no P-mount cartridges to now having like three or four different kinds under my roof, it's, it's kind of bizarre, but I've really enjoyed them. So far, I haven't heard a bad P-mount. I've only listened to Audio Technica, so apparently Audio Technica P-mount cartridges sound really good. So I forgot to show you how well this can track a bad record before I disconnected it in the other room. So without further ado, let's go ahead and play this Star Wars record. You won't be able to hear it for copyright reasons, but I want you to see how this thing tracks like a champ up, down, left, and right. And it really does a good job just hanging in there with what is an off-center record, with a serious warp and other things going on. It just trucks right back and forth. And if I go up here, you can see that that red arrow isn't moving again because it's on a separate armature than the tone arm itself. But this thing is doing a fantastic job. But I do want to share with you the audio from this. So we are going to do a direct feed sound test next. For music, we will be using friend of the channel, Laura Ainsworth. Her and her husband produce this fantastic record. She has other albums as well, which I hope to hear someday. She's on Apple Music and stuff too. But this music is a treat to share with you. I was just looking at the Dead Wax before I put the record on, and I realized that this was pressed by Welcome to 1979, or at least it was plated by Welcome to 1979. That is the same organization in Nashville that did the Vinyl Me Please Patsy Cline showcase album uh, last year that we featured the tricolor record. In fact, just yesterday I posted a picture of that very record made by the same folks from a physical standpoint as this one, which is very cool indeed. So without further ado, let's go ahead and close the lid and we're going to hit the start button and play right from the beginning of the record. Put your headphones on. This is a direct feed sound test. When the only sound in the empty street is the heavy tread of the heavy feet that belong to a lonesome cup, I open shop. When the moon so long has been gazing down on the wayward ways of this wayward town, that her smile becomes a smirk. Okay, I need to find a better place for this turntable right now. <laughs> this is just a temporary spot for it. That being said, wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that just clean and perfect and warm? It was all the things I love about vinyl. This is a fantastic turntable. If you find one of these, take a closer look. 
I would feel less confident about a linear tracker just working perfectly off the shelf than I would a regular turntable. There's a lot more going on. You've got a belt assembly with the phono cartridge and the tone arm and everything going across. You've got the motor for the platter. It's just, there's more to it. Like I said, it's fairly over-engineered from the aspects of a regular turntable, certainly a manual one. However, if it's working or if you can get it in working order for a reasonable price, this is, these are cool. These are really, really cool. And I'm, again, thankful to have it, uh, plan on keeping it for the long haul. And one more feature that I forgot to mention, I wanna make sure I bring up, is the mute cycle. This is the first turntable that I've ever owned that has the mute cycle built in. So when it raises or lowers the stylus off the record, usually that'll create a pop. Usually there's a little pop sound when that happens. However, this turntable mutes the audio when it's raising or lowering the tone arm so you don't get that pop when the stylus makes contact or comes off of the record surface. And that therefore all you get is music. You just hear the music start, the music stop, and you wouldn't think that'd be that big of a feature, but again, listening to this thing all week, it's made for a, just a very pleasurable listening experience. It's been absolutely fantastic. All right, my friends, and that is going to do it. I hope you're having a wonderful week, a wonderful month, and that life is treating you right. And just wanna say, take care of one another out there. Let me know what you think about this show, about this video, about this turntable down in the comments below. But my friends, that is gonna do it for today. So happy record hunting, and we'll see you next time.